Dr. Robillard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Johnson, and distinguished members of the committee for inviting me to testify today. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before you to discuss the importance of focusing on the issue of dyslexia, a disability affecting one in six students that unfortunately goes largely unnoticed in federal politics. I currently coordinate all student 504 services for the Austin Independent School District where I oversee our district's dyslexia services program. Our department works with each of the 129 Austin campuses to provide professional development and guidance to help teachers understand the indicators of dyslexia so we can identify students as early as possible and provide that intervention that's needed. This is a significant change from the previous model and progress is still not as swift as we would like. We had approximately 2,000 students identified with dyslexia when I began this process in 2013. With concerted effort, we've now identified around 5,000 students, but that is still only about 5% of our overall student population in AISD. In May of 2014, at the urging of a member of our Board of Trustees, we began allocating funds to provide teacher training so that some teachers could become certified academic language therapists or CALTs. A call can provide the most advanced and efficacious type of dyslexia intervention available. Our goal is to have at least one call for every campus. 18 months into the program, we're now 61 teachers toward that goal. This effort, fully funded by local dollars, comes at great cost to the district and only provides training for one teacher per school. However, additional professional development, including training and materials, is made available for all K through 12th grade teachers so they can better understand dyslexia and how to deliver curriculum in an accessible manner for all of the identified students. Dyslexia impacts 10 to 20 percent of students in K through 12 with varying levels of severity. Ideally, teacher preparation programs would include coursework dedicated to identifying and teaching students with dyslexia, a disability which has a high rate of impact on literacy acquisition regardless of socioeconomic status or race. Ultimately, the greatest impact would be, providing, be provided by training all pre-service teachers to identify and teach dyslexic students, making the possibility of having specialized reading task forces for dyslexia at each campus a natural byproduct. In my position coordinating 504 services as well as in my private practice as a neuropsychologist, I strongly encourage support for the READ Act. Having specified annual funds devoted to dyslexia research research that focuses on best practices in early identification, professional development for teachers and administrators, and curriculum development and evidence-based educational tools for children with dyslexia can only improve the opportunities of all students to have access to an education that allows each of them to learn to read. At the university level, this would lead a shift toward increased pre-service development in areas that address basic reading deficits and their neurobiological etiology, as well as the understanding of language development and how it's influenced by dyslexia. A few universities have such programs, but most do not address dyslexia in any format during pre-service training. Lack of teacher training and understanding the indicators of dyslexia causes students to be missed or even misidentified as having other learning issues. Teachers deserve this training. Identifying dyslexia is only the first step of the process. To fully address learning difficulties for dyslexic students, we must keep the disorder in mind when designing classroom instruction, implementing technology plans, planning for social and emotional learning, understanding how to provide parent support and engagement, and training our administrators to be knowledgeable about appropriate identification and intervention. Dyslexia is not a disorder that can be compartmentalized. It is not just a deficit, but it carries with it inherent strengths that have been recognized for decades. These might include other areas of academic strength, creative ways of thinking, more acute perceptual reasoning, and many other traits. When dyslexia goes unidentified and undiagnosed, these strengths are often suppressed and the lack of understanding frequently leads to both student and staff frustration. It is not uncommon for unidentified dyslexic students to become unmotivated or to have behavioral problems, and they often perform significantly below potential academically. Unidentified, their underlying strengths may never be discovered. The READ Act is a necessary flotation device to bring scientific knowledge about dyslexia up to a more universal understanding. 
and to enhance our ability to make the practical application of science to practice more seamless for educators and students. Policies such as found in the READ Act will allow dyslexic students access to early identification as well as appropriate literacy instruction and the opportunity to develop their potential to the fullest. Our prison population is replete with dyslexic individuals who have been identified too late. While dyslexia identification and intervention is not likely to be the entire answer to the school to prison pipeline, it certainly seems to be a key factor that if better understood could be addressed in a systematic and effective manner. We will all benefit at every level by investing in research concerning dyslexia and all issues related to that disorder. Thank you for inviting me to testify. And thank you, Dr. Robillard. Uh